They don't want that free blues. Yo, what up, gang? This is Free Blues Boxing. Jeez. Hit the like and subscribe for unlimited content. You know what it is. We are back. God dang. Terrence Bud Crawford stops Kell Brook in the third round. The boxing world is completely on flames this November with just consecutive fights. For this particular fight, I was a little disappointed um, with Kell Brook's approach and uh, just how he fought Crawford. The first couple rounds, Kell, Kell Brook actually came out looking nice. He came out snapping his jab, working the one-two, and uh, Crawford, he emphasized it at the end. He had to change his game plan. Crawford told Brook at the end of the fight, well, you know, basically he was kind of tough. Like, I was trying to counter you coming in, but you were trying to counter me coming in. So from my perspective, it just looked like they were both just being patient fighters. But then round three, boom, Crawford tags Kell Brook with the nicest counter right hand. I couldn't tell if it was a, a jab or hook. I see a lot of people making fun of it, calling it a, a juke. <laughs> but whatever, it was a mixture of both. It, it was just a beautiful shot. The thing is, both fighters, both Terrence and Brook, naturally start off slow. The first couple rounds were really just a chess match, just to see who has the better jab. Crawford is pretty elite in, in pretty much every aspect of the game. I expected, I expected Kell Brook uh, to be just a little quicker on the jab and the one-two. Crawford showed that he was just mentally and physically prepared uh, for anything Kell brought to the table that night. Mind you, this is Crawford's fifth welterweight fight. It's his fifth stoppage. He's five for five and stopping opponents at the welterweight and the 12th time um, defending his belts, the fifth time defending his, or the fourth time defending his WBO. As I predicted in my last video, I knew that Kell Brook's defense is not up to par. Uh, he has a fragile face, and Crawford, he was just the stronger man. He was the stronger and the better man. One thing I love about Crawford is that he backs up everything he says. He's always 100% right how the fight is, is, is going to go. He never listens about what critics say about fighters being too big or too skilled. Um, he just comes out every fight, and, and he gets the job done. I mean, in the third round, Kell Brook was getting mopped. When Crawford hit Brook with that counter jab in the third round, he turned around and fell like half of his body was outside of the ring. Beautiful shot, like I said, but what I didn't like is that the ref called it a knockdown. Sometimes I think the ref is just as nervous at the fighters, and sometimes they just want to call something. Crawford eventually just took advantage, just started throwing punches and bunches and, and landing that uh, that strong left hand. Clean shots are being landed right on Kelbrook's temple. I get it, he's defenseless, but... Kelbrook, he's a he's a champion. He's a he's a former champion. He's a professional. I wanted to see what he would have done if, if the fight was prolonged. As I stated in my last video, Terrence Crawford is the best switch hitter in boxing. He started off orthodox to throw off Kelbrook's game plan. Don't get me wrong, Terrence Crawford is comfortable fighting both ways, but he is more dominant uh, fighting southpaw, and that's what happened this fight. Halfway through the fight, Terrence Crawford switched stance and figured out the distance. He was able to get that right foot around um, Carol Brooks' left foot and land the straights and, and the counter jabs. What's also really impressive is that Crawford, Crawford stopped Carol Brook in less rounds than Triple G and Errol Spence Jr. What that lets me know is that Crawford is very dangerous and the boxing world has got to start putting some respect on his name. He is the pound for pound king, a six time world champion, through three different weight classes. And these other guys across the street on the Al Heyman PBC side uh, now have to step up. Now have to step up. They have to, um, regardless, either side, they, they got to agree to the stipulations and make the fight happen. The boxing politics is the primary reason why these fights have not been uh, happening just yet. These promoters are clashing heads and cannot negotiate a pay-per-view fight um, and, and, and which everybody wants to see. Initially, as stated by Terrence Crawford and, and, and his promoter, Bob Arum, the Manny Pacquiao fight versus Crawford was supposed to be made instead of the Kell Brook fight. COVID-19 had messed up the market and uh, without fans not being there, uh, as, as stated by Bob Arum, it just wouldn't have made sense to go further and make that fight happen. Bob Arum also said, as soon as they can put out the vaccine, then, uh, the fight can be made. Now that's breaking news, by the way, that fight between Terrence Crawford and Manny Pacquiao is more likely to be made uh, before Terrence fights 
Errol Spence Jr. Aram says that the PBC Al Heyman side pay-per-view buys are quote-unquote catastrophically low. He said that the Charlo fight just that just took place, I think, just about two or three months ago, only had 70,000 buys, and then Tank's fight, when he fought Leo Santa Cruz just a couple weekends back, only generated a little over 100,000 buys, and he said that they're, he said that Mayweather and them might try to say, oh, it was 200. Bob Aaron said that it would be stupid business to make these mega fights without the ESPN Plus platform. On top of that, Terrence stated after the fight that if the fights don't be made with the other side against the Errol Spences, the Keith Thurmans, the Danny Garcia, then it is what it is, and he wishes nothing but the best for him. If the pay-per-view market has dissipated due to the COVID, then PBC Al Heyman need to sit down and do business with Bob Aaron and ESPN, just like they did with the Wilder and Fury fight, and generate enough revenue so that uh, the promoters are satisfied and the fighters. Now, it's going to be crucial what Crawford decides to do when his contract ends in a year. Uh, Bob Aram stated that, you know, nobody, it, it wouldn't make sense for him to go to across the street and fight on the PBC Al Heyman platform. Uh, it would just be, it just wouldn't make sense because they wouldn't pay him how the ESPN platform would. It depends. Does Crawford want to settle for less money and give the fans what they want and fight for the legacy? Or does he want to settle on the ESPN platform and keep fighting B-class fighters and get paid more and just have a, a, a career going that, going down that route? Like I said, Crawford's time is ticking. He's 33 years old now. And right now it's just such a, a pivotal time. Um, and we'll just have to see what, what, what his decision is going forward. I do believe that Terrence Crawford is the top one or two welterweights and he's underappreciated and overlooked and he's strong. He's a strong fighter coming up from three different weights. And he's putting away these former world champions, uh, Kell Brook, who just, you know, a few years back, just went to war with Errol Spence through 11 rounds. I mean, you could do a face comparison of Terrence Crawford after the Kell Brook fight versus Errol Spence after the Kell Brook fight. And that should say something. Terrence Crawford is a dog, and he cannot be denied at the welterweight division. He has power. He has speed. He can switch. He has the best counter punching, the best switch hitting skills. He makes the best adjustments in the ring since Floyd Mayweather Jr. And he has a great trainer as well. What makes Terrence Crawford so elite is that he doesn't go in the fight with the game plan. He didn't watch any of Kale's previous fights. The tra his trainer said that you're going to see some things in there that I can't see. So you have to get in there and you have to make the proper adjustment. Crawford has shut up all the critics and put the welterweight division on notice by stopping the most elite gatekeeper at this division. Until anyone cracks the code, Terrence Crawford is the number one fighter in the world. It's the pound for pound king. Comment below if you agree or not and who you want to see Terrence Crawford take on next. Thank you, Boxing World, for watching. This is Free Blues Boxing. Don't forget to hit the subscribe, the notification bell, and the like button for unlimited boxing content. Until next time.